Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We welcome you now as we celebrate Monday of the fifth week of Lent. Uh, just uh, one week now until we uh, leading up to uh, Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. And uh, we have received word that uh, our uh, public, uh, no public participation in the Mass will continue at least through Easter Sunday, probably beyond. So uh, uh, we all have... Uh, imposed uh, penance this year. Uh, it certainly feels like a penance for me of not having uh, our faith community together. Um, but hopefully uh, this will make a, a great difference as uh, we hear about uh, those words flattening the curve uh, and uh, stemming the tide of this epidemic. So that's what we pray for and we do pray for God's mercy, love, and forgiveness in our daily lives. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In Babylon, there lived a man named Joachim, who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, her pious parents, had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich. He had a garden near his house, and the Jews had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges, of whom the Lord said, Wickedness has come out of Babylon from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her enter every day for her walk, they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciousness. They would not allow their eyes to look to heaven and did not keep in mind just judgments. One day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual, with two maids only. She decided to bathe, for the weather was warm. Nobody else was there except the two elders, who had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. As soon as the maids had left, the two old men got up and hurried to her. Look, they said, the garden doors are shut and no one can see us. Give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that you dismissed your maids because a young man was here with you. I am completely trapped, Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Yet, 
It is better for me to fall into your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked, and the old men also shouted at her as one of them ran to open the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations by the old men, the servants felt very ashamed, for never had any such thing had been said about Susanna. When the two people came to her husband, Joachim, the next day, the two wicked elders also came, fully determined to put Susanna to death. Before all the people, they ordered, send for Susanna, the daughter of Helikai, and the wife of Joachim. When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives. All her relatives and the onlookers were weeping. In the midst of the people, the two elders rose up and laid their hands on her. Through tears, she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made this accusation. As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the doors of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we, in a corner of the garden, saw this crime, we ran toward them. We saw them lying together, but the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. He opened the doors and ran off. Then we seized her and asked who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testified to this. The assembly believed them, since they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden, and you are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel, the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How have you grown evil with age? How you have grown evil with age? Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent and freeing the guilty, although the Lord says, the innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you are a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you. Lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make you an end of both of you. The whole assembly cried aloud, blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus, was an innocent, innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion, that he may live. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went up to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we have a God-fearing woman named Susanna who is falsely accused of adultery by two old men, two dirty old men who were appointed judges, very unjust judges at that. But a youth named Daniel thankfully comes along and saves her when he is given permission to question the two men separately, which is very important. The two old men offer accounts that do not live up Uh, do not line up with each other, Uh, and uh, so they, in turn, are put to death while Susanna's innocent life is spared. Similarly, Jesus saves a woman accused of adultery in today's gospel. Unlike Susanna, she's not completely innocent, but uh, like Susanna, she was involved uh, in uh, being set up, and Jesus knows it. Jesus immediately smells a rat because obviously a woman cannot commit adultery by herself. Where is the man? No one seems to be concerned about that. But Jesus clearly understands that something is wrong here. So he clearly turns the tables on her accusers. Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her, he says. And uh, the woman's accuser realize that they have... uh, been had, and they walk away one by one, beginning with the elders, because the oldest are at least smart enough to know when uh, they've been caught. Whether their hearts are changed is a whole other story. Where are your accusers now? Jesus says. Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she answers. Then neither do I condemn you. Just go and sin no more. 
So imagine that you are the one standing before Jesus. What sin weighs you down? And what does Jesus say to you? If like that woman, your heart is truly full of sorrow, he indeed will forgive your sin. And if you know you are forgiven, then how will you live? And how will you, in turn, forgive and show mercy to others? Those are very important uh, aspects of our Christian life. Knowing that we're forgiven and also having that same desire to forgive. We lift our prayer needs to our God in heaven at this time. We pray for all the intentions of our universal church. We especially pray for the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our uh, diocesan bishop, David Malloy, and all religious leaders as they do their best to shepherd their people through these difficult days. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, national and local leaders, as they strive to provide direction and counsel through this crisis, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are afflicted by the coronavirus, their families and all their loved ones, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all medical personnel, doctors and nurses treating the sick and working on a cure, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have lost employment, and all the lives that have been upended by this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and vulnerable and all those who care for them daily, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dearly parted, departed, having died with Christ, that they return to life with them. And all who have died recently, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of this morning's Mass, for the late Reverend Edward Gillespie, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, for the prayers we list in our parish intention book and prayer chain, that they be united to those of our patroness, St. Catherine Drexel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we ask to hear these and all our prayers as always through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice uh, at the, my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. 
Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, that with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of a lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthen by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults and by following Christ hasten our steps upward toward you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your wonderful lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of a heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect us from coronavirus, COVID-19, and all serious illness. For all that have died from it, have mercy. For those who are ill now, bring healing. For those searching for a remedy, enlighten them. For medical caregivers helping the sick, strengthen and shield them. For those working to contain the spread, grant them success. For those afraid, grant peace. For your precious blood, may your precious blood be our defense and salvation. By your grace, may you turn the evil of disease into moments of consolation and hope. May we always fear the contagion of sin more than any illness. We abandon ourselves to your infinite mercy. Amen. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun.